Okay, guys, I hope everybody can hear me. Can you hear me now? Hello? Testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? Yay! All right, there we go. All right, technical difficulties. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now we're on track. All right, guys, um, so what I was saying, I know you couldn't hear me, but what I was saying is I want to talk to you just really quickly about um, kind of a public service announcement. Um, COVID is on the rise, and it's particularly on the rise in Florida and Texas. Um, you know, if you've watched any news, you know that. And uh, this isn't, I, I'm not political here. This isn't about vaccines or the choice to get one or not. That That's fine. Um, I want to talk to you about treatment because there's a component of this that seems to be missing. I sat in on a, a webinar yesterday between the governor and the CEOs of lots of major hospitals. And um, it kept coming up over and over that this, that what I'm about to tell you is really not widely distributed information and it needs to be. So this is kind of my public service announcement. And what I'm going to tell you, I want you to go out and tell everybody that you know, because we might be able to save a life here. Okay. So super important. If you get COVID, um, if you have symptoms, so if you have a fever, if you can't smell, if you have aches and pains, if you're feeling just totally under the weather, you've got a cough, um, you know, just COVID symptoms, you need to go get tested right away. Now, I'm the type of person that if I get sick, I'm going to try to ride it out. And I'm only going to go get seen if I'm like dying, right? Because, you know, I, I, I know that with viral infections, you pretty much just have to let them run their course, get rest, vitamin C, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not the type of person to just run to the doctor, you know, anytime I have something. It takes a lot to get me there. But this is super important because... We have a treatment for COVID called monoclonal antibody therapy. And this is an infusion. It's given via IV. It takes about an hour, usually given in a clinical setting. Um, but it can only be used when you first get sick. So if you get COVID and you go get, you, you start to have symptoms, you think, uh-oh, this is not good. You go get tested and they say, yes, you are positive. You need to get yourself right away to the ER so that they can find out if you're a candidate for this therapy. Now, this monoclonal antibody therapy is awesome because it can help reduce the um, likelihood that you'll end up hospitalized, that you'll develop a severe case, that you'll end up in the ICU. But it also will shorten, has been shown to shorten the length of the infection as well. So this is, and it's widely available. Um, so it's not like, you know, there's a limited supply. There's enough. So if you have symptoms, make sure you get them addressed right away. Don't wait, because if you wait two, three, four days and you're feeling under the weather and it finally gets to the point that, oh my gosh, I'm just feeling so horrible, I got to go to the hospital, it's too late. The monoclonal antibody therapy will not work on you at that point. It has to be initiated at the beginning of your infection period. So, it, that's kind of a, a really important thing to make sure that we're passing on to everybody that we know, because when you get so bad that you have to go to the hospital, you know, your O2 sats drop, you're having trouble breathing, you know, you're in really bad shape, that option is no longer on the table. So if we can get people treated before they get bad, we can help prevent some of these really serious consequences. So do me a favor, tell everybody that you know that if they have symptoms, go get tested right away, get themselves to an ER to find out if they're a candidate for this therapy. And hopefully we can help reduce some of the serious um, effects of COVID moving forward. And this is especially important if you're in Florida or Texas. So do me a favor, if you would, and pass that on to everybody that you know, and hopefully we'll be able to save a life. Okay. 
So that's my public service announcement for today. So it looks like everybody is uh, here and can hear me. Thank you guys for joining again. I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties. And uh, okay, Debbie uh, asked, can I spell that? Yes, um, I will type it in for you. Hold on one second. Here we go. It's called monoclonal antibody therapy. Um, and it's, it's an um, IV infusion. So they just start an IV. They run some fluids in. They um, piggyback this on. So it, it runs in. It takes about an hour. You need to be monitored while they're um, doing the infusion. Then you're monitored for about an hour afterwards just to make sure that everything is good. And then you get to go home. That's it. It's super easy simple. And if it can keep you out of the ICU and off of a ventilator, it is well worth two hours of your time. Let me tell you, um, this, this new strain is nothing to play around with. We want to try to prevent the long-term um, serious complications moving forward. So Naromi says, hi, I just passed my exam. Thank you very much for your video. Oh, thank you for letting us know. That's awesome. I love success stories. It's my favorite part of this. Uh, Mary says, I'm having issues logging into my online course. I started June 22nd and it's telling me I have to enroll and pay $149. Uh, Mary, if you can, can go onto my website for your CNA.com, it's number four, just like this, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A.com. Go onto my website and under more, you'll see contact us, click on that, send me a con, uh, you know, information and through the contact form, give me your first name, your last name and your email address. And I'll be happy to look that up for you. We'll see what we can do to get you all set up. Okay. Um, Matt, the Patriot says my school in Ottawa, Canada brought me to your channel. Oh, that's awesome. Up in Canada. That's incredible. Trying to be a PSW. Not sure if CNA is a PSW or not, but some of your videos were needed for a class project. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Matt, uh, welcome. Welcome to our community. Thank you for joining. So PSW is a term I'm not completely familiar with. Um, I'm thinking it's a patient safety worker or patient... Um, something worker. Uh, I'm not real sure what that stands for, but I would assume it's probably the equivalent to what we have here. Um, okay. Personal support worker. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm assuming it's, it's pretty equivalent to what we have here, which is an uncertified position. So you've got two tracks. You've got certified, which means that they've taken the state exam, uh, independent third party has said, yes, they have the skills and the knowledge needed. And then you have uncertified. So all of them do the same thing. Okay. It's the same job, certified and uncertified. Now certified gets to use that C in the front, certified nursing assistant, or in some states they call it a state tested nursing assistant. Um, that just means that they've taken the test. On the other hand, if you're not certified, you can't use that term. So we call them something different, like patient care tech, uh, patient care assistant, patient care aide, um, personal safety attendant. We have uh, nurse tech, rehab tech, mental health tech. Those are all, they can do the same job. They're just not state tested. So they can't use that term CNA or STNA. It just means that you're performing personal care skills. You're just not state certified. So they have to come up with other terms for that. And I'm assuming that um, Canada works on a pretty um, equivalent uh, basis to that. So um, I'm not real sure, um, you know, whether you know, this will, this track will lead you to certification later and it may, um, but that's going to be the distinction between the two. And since you guys do the same job, um, that's why my videos are relevant. Okay. So I hope that helps. 
Uh, Anid says, just stopping by to say thank you. I passed my exams thanks to your videos. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Welcome to the wonderful world of healthcare. We're so happy to be have been a part of your journey. Um, Jackie says, I have family living in Canada and PSW and CNA are the same. And um, Jackie, I would agree with that. What I'm thinking, though, is the PSW is not state certified. They haven't taken the test. So that's why they call it something a little bit different. Um, Bizue, he, I'm not sure how to say your name. Um, Bizue, who? Um, hello from Massachusetts. Hello. Um, I'm just going to call you Biz. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. Mary says, when I watched your videos where you show how to do a skill for the test, do you have to say, I will think about the skill and document? Oh, that's a really good question. Okay. So I'm going to spend just a minute talking about this. So at the end of any of my, if you've watched any of my skills videos, you know, at the end of the skill, I say, I'm going to think about my skill, make any corrections, and then tell the evaluator my skill is done. Now, what I'm telling you as the student, as the person getting ready to test, is that I don't want you to rush through the skill, get your hands washed and go, I'm done. Right. And that's kind of that. that we kind of want to do that because we're being tested and we just want it over with just as quick as we can. So we kind of get into a rush at the end of the skill. And what I'm trying to get you to do is take a second, back up, slow down, read that care plan again so that you can make sure that you did the skill correctly. I want you to think about the actions that you took. Did you use the right supplies? Did you keep your patient safe? Did you actually look at the patient at the end of the skill to see, do they look comfortable? Are they too close to the edge of the bed? Do they have their call light? Um, remember to look at the patient. I want you to think about any corrections that you might need to make. And then when you're all done and you're 100% sure that that is exactly the way it was supposed to be done, then you can say, my skill is done. Now, notice I said nothing about documentation there because documentation is a physical action that you have to take. You can't just talk about it. You have to do it. So if you're measure recording pulse, respirations, feeding a resident in a chair or emptying the drainage bag, those are all documentation skills. So at the end of the skill, after you've done your closing, here's your call light. Is there anything else you need? Are you comfortable? Can I get you a magazine? I'm going to open your curtain. I'm washing my hands now. After you've done all that, you physically have to go get a pen and a piece of paper and you have to write down that measurement. It is not a verbal. They cannot take a verbal. They will give you a documentation form. You need to write on that form before you end your skill. So documentation is not something we talk about. It's something we do. And after you document, then you should think about the steps of your skill, make any corrections, and tell the evaluator your skill is done. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, so it, it's you don't just want to say that you would document. You actually need to do it. Uh, Rafaela says, hello from Brazil. Wow, I'm getting a multinational audience now. This is awesome. I love to see people come from other countries. Uh, Rita says, hello, hello. And Matt says, the explanation helped. Good, very good. All right, so does anybody have any questions for me today? Anything that I can help you with? Any burning questions about the test? what to expect, um, even about work. Anybody have any questions? I'm here to help. Uh, Immacula raised her hand. Hi. And Biz says, thank you. Your video helps me more than my class. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's why I do this. Um, I'm here to help you guys. So FT says, how do you sign up? So FT, I'm wondering, are you talking about my online course or are you talking about just my videos? My videos are available on my website, foryourcna.com, for anybody free. 
I have animated videos that talks about the theory behind the skills. I've got skills videos on there. They're all there. You can go to my YouTube channel as well and see a lot of other content, like all of my lives are in there. Um, some uh, classroom lectures are in there. there. There's a lot of information on my YouTube channel as well. And it's youtube.com slash for your CNA. Um, but I also have an online program that brings everything together and it gives you a lot of interactive activities. So you're not just learning, you're having to do as well within that course. Now that course is available on courses.foryourcna.com. So you just go on to the courses.foryourcna.com website and you can enroll right there and start right away. Um, there's about 10 or 11 lessons that are unlocked for you to give it a try before you buy. So I hope that helps. Chris Madu says, hey, I'm from Texas. Hey, Chris, I just left Texas. I spoke at a conference there. Pretty cool state. I had a question. I actually just took my CNA exam. I was wondering how many skills you can miss and still pass. Oh, the answer is none. You have to pass all five skills. Now, three of them you know about, right? You got a, you got something that looked like this, gave you three skills, and you had to perform those skills in the order listed. That's how the test is, is structured. But they're also testing you on hand washing, and they're not telling you about that, and they're testing you on indirect care as well. I've got a whole video on that on my website. Go watch it. It's under animated videos. Um, you have to pass all five of those skills to be a CNA. So it doesn't mean you have to get them all 100%. You can miss a few things here and there. And the next question you're going to ask is, well, how many things can I miss? And the answer to that is, is not that simple. I have a whole video on this um, on grading the clinical skills in the animated video section. You probably ought to go over and take a look at that. But the easy answer here is that every step is weighted differently. So st some steps are going to count a whole lot more than other steps would. And it really depends on the effect on the patient. So you have to remember that during the CNA test, it's not about you. Nothing about the test is about you. Nothing. It's all about the patient. So every step that you take the evaluators are looking at it as what effect did that step have on the patient? So if you had the patient too close to the edge of the bed when you rolled them over, that's dangerous for the patient. So that would count pretty big. If you didn't rinse soap off of the skin of the patient when you're bathing them, that's going to cause the skin to dry, become itchy, and it can actually crack open. That's a serious consequence to the patient. So to you, it's like, oh, I just forgot to rinse. What's the big deal? The test is always looking at it as what is the consequence to the patient? So it's not as easy as saying, well, you can miss three things and still pass. It doesn't work like that. Some steps... If you miss one step, you fail the whole skill. Others, you can miss four or five things and still pass because they aren't weighted as heavy. In fact, um, let's see here. Vanessa Phillips sent us a message on my YouTube that she tested. She's waiting on her results, but she forgot to document the urine. And she asked, would that fail me? And the answer is, I'm not sure. It really depends on what else you missed because that's actually a really big step. In CNA world, there is no busy work. They're not giving you, you know, stuff to do just to keep you busy. That's not how this works. Everything that you're assigned to do is important. There's a reason behind it. So if you're measuring the urine and you don't write it down, then the nurses don't have that information. And now we don't know if the heart is working properly, if the kidneys are working properly, if um, the medications are being cleared, if the medications are having a metabolic effect because it's turning the urine a different color, if the patient has a urinary tract infection. There's a whole lot of information there that we aren't getting simply because you didn't write down a measurement. Just because you measured it, 
doesn't benefit anybody unless we have that measurement to work with. So not writing it down is actually a really big deal and it's going to count big on the state exam. So I hope that helped uh, you guys. It's not as easy as just saying, oh, we well, can miss three things and you'll be okay. Um, so let's see here. Halima says, how do we sign up for the online class? Go to courses. Let me type that in for you. Okay. So C-O-U-R-S-E-S -E dot for your CNA dot com. There you go. So courses dot for your CNA dot com. Um, let's see. Does one have to have a CNA license before I can go for LPN? Is there a big, big, pay difference between the two. Yes, there is a significant pay difference between CNA and LPN. Of course, it depends on where you work, but yes, it is significant. Um, and as far as needing to be a CNA first, some states do require that. Others don't. So you really have to find out what your state requires. And the best way to do that is to contact a vocational school in your current area and ask them. Um, but a lot of states are moving to that um, model where they do require that you be a CNA before you get your LPN um, because there's so much to learn in LPN training. I mean, it is, it is extremely intensive. And if you're already a CNA going into it, that means that they can cut out about four weeks of CNA training at the beginning and jump right into nursing training. So it allows them to cover more material in the training program because you've already got some of it before you even get in. Think of the CNA like a prereq, okay? Uh, Jackie says, is it guaranteed to get a new set of skills on the retest? Not guaranteed, but pretty common. Um, most of the time, see, when you register for the test, your skill set is already decided by the computer, already done. So when you, um, let's say that you get um, measure and record respirations, let's see here. Let's say you get mouth care uh, with dentures, measure record respirations and transferring resident from bed to wheelchair. So you get this skill set. When you come back, if you fail, and you come back into retest, you're probably not going to get this skill set again. But you may get another skill set that also has respirations on it. Because respirations is a common documentation skill that shows up on three or four different care plan sets. So that's kind of important to know that even though you won't get the same skill set, you may get one skill within the new set that was the same as what was on the old set. So there may be some overlap there. Um, so Chris says, hey, sorry, I meant steps in each skill. Yeah. Um, how many steps can you miss? And and that's, uh, that's a very, very common question. And like I said, I've got a whole video on it. If you go over to foryourcna.com, Click on, on CNA training animated videos, scroll to the bottom. I've got a whole bunch of videos on the testing process and I have one there on the skills testing and it'll help uh, visually explain to you why each step is a little bit graded a little bit differently. Um, so let's see here. Riley says, hi, Miss Patty. Hi, Riley. I wanted to let you know I passed my CNA test on Friday. I wanted to let you know, thank you for the tips. That's awesome, Riley. Congratulations. I love success stories. You guys are awesome. Uh, Riley says, I've already got a job doing home health. Wonderful. That's awesome. Already working. Um, great job. Take care of those patients. Uh, Karen gives lots of hearts. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Gloria says, hey, Patty from Texas. Hey, Gloria. Um, nice of you to join us. Texas was a lot of fun. Good barbecue in Texas. Uh, Chris says, thank you so much for clarifying. And FT says, how do you register for the exam? Well, go to my website. I know I sound like a broken record, don't I? Go to my website. I got everything there. So if you go to fouryourcna.com, on the main menu over here, kind of halfway around, you'll see CNA testing. 
So click on the testing tab and a uh, menu is going to drop down and I have step by step uh, re test registration instructions. So click on that. I've got a video where I actually do a registration on the screen and videotaped it so you can see the whole process. Everything from creating an account to verifying your email to filling out the form, what to expect, all of that is in there. But I also have step by step instructions in a slide format. And that's really a whole lot easier if you're filling it out because the video goes fast those slides, you get to control the timing. So that'll help you register. And it goes over all the little nitty gritty details that you need to know. Uh, Karen says, hola, hola. We're practicing Prometric test. Oh, you weren't successful. It's very difficult. How can I choose the right answer? And I assume... Karen, that um, your primary uh, language is probably not English. Is that correct? Is Spanish your primary language? Um, if so, that does make it a little bit more difficult. The best thing you can do is to um, consider taking the written test in Spanish. That helps. You do have that option. But um, just the the best advice I can give you is to practice. Do a lot of practice questions. Any answer that treats the patient like a child is not the right answer. So CNAs do not restrict. We do not um, force. We do not um, make patients do anything. We don't punish patients. We don't do anything like that. So if that is one of the answers, it is not the right answer ever, ever. We also have to think about safety and infection control. And those are the big things that are going to be on the state exam. So take a lot of practice tests. I've got one on my website. Of course I do, right? I know that why you're tired of the website. I know. But if you go to fouryearcna.com under training, I've got a practice test on there and that may help you as well. I'm getting ready to put some uh, practice questions up on YouTube um, as well. The problem with YouTube is that it's not um, interactive. Like you can't press a button and get feedback. I'm just reading stuff to you. So that's kind of boring to me. If you go onto my website, that one is interactive. It's a little bit better for you. Um, so Riley says, I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Riley. I appreciate it. I am doing fantastic. Uh, Antoinette says, good afternoon, Nurse Patty. Good afternoon, Antoinette. And Gloria says, thank you for all you do. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Uh, Mommy Lee says, hi, Miss Patty. I've been watching your videos. I was just waiting on a test date from Prometric here in Florida. I'm nervous a little. It's normal to be nervous. It's okay. One question I have is, do I have to wear scrubs for exam day? No, you don't. You can go in jeans and a t-shirt. The only requirement is that you have closed-toed shoes. That's the only um, apparel requirement that Prometric has. But I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell all my students. There is something to look the part, act the part. There's something to that. And if you go in scrubs, you generally tend to perform a little bit better because you're in the right mindset, right? You're looking the part. It also will indirectly affect how the evaluators grade you. On a subconscious level, if you look like a CNA and you act like a CNA, <laughs> they're going to grade you. Um, if you're, you know, showing up in cut off shorts and a bikini top with a tank top on on top of it, then they're probably going to judge you a little bit harsher because you don't really look the part, does that make sense? That's kind of a subconscious thing. So I definitely recommend wearing scrubs for the test, but it's not required. Uh, Debbie says, I see on your website you offer a CNA instructor instructions. I'm bilingual and thinking about becoming one. What is your opinion on this? Do you think being an instructor is highly in demand? Yes, Debbie. Yes, yes, yes. We need instructors horribly. There's so many um, programs out there, so many schools that have had to shut down their CNA programs because they do not have qualified instructors. Um, you can get in touch with me. Just fill out the contact form on my website and I'd be happy to talk to you a little bit more about it and see what we can do to help you on your way.
Uh, Joanna says, I wanted to know for the Prometric, when doing the first skill before you knock and enter the patient's room, do you physically wash your hands first or do you wash your hands after indirect care? Oh, Joanna, that is an awesome question. And I'm going to answer it briefly today, but you won the uh, award for the question that I'm going to start off next week's lesson with. So let me give you a short answer for this. And then I want you to tune in next week for the longer version. Okay. The short answer is that you must knock, identify your patient, identify your, yourself by name and title, close the, get permission, close the privacy curtain, and then wash your hands. But if you tune in next week, I'll explain why. And the why behind that is probably the most important part that you need to know. Okay, so don't forget to tune in next week. Stephanie says, I've submitted my documents for the CNA program. Can't wait to start on August 27th. Well, congratulations. So nice of you to join us. And I hope you're getting some value out of this. Make sure you come back as you uh, go through your program as well. Uh, Gab Gabaloo says, hi, my name is Gabriella. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I became a CNA on June 21st. Congratulations. That is awesome. I actually have family that lives outside of St. Louis. Um, I'm familiar with that area. So congratulations and welcome to healthcare. So let's get on to the um, exciting part of my uh, day where I get to congratulate the people that have passed and we heard from Patricia Leanne, who said that uh, she passed the state exam. Gladys Ramos passed the state exam. Now, this one I'm having, I'm going to have a really hard time pronouncing. So if I butcher it, please, please forgive me. Jufralande Gael Clairvillas, I believe, um, passed the state exam. And it sounds like from the name that... Um, they may not be uh, originally from this country, so congratulations. Isha Musa also passed the CNA State Exam. Drop by our YouTube channel to let us know. And Laura Nam passed. La La I'm sorry, Lorena M. I'm sorry, Lorena M. passed last year. But stop by our channel to let us know. Um, I guess she had caught some of the, the live sessions and stopped by the channel to let us know that she passed the CNA state exam last year. She had failed it once before, but she found our videos very, very helpful in her second attempt. So she wanted to stop by and let us know. And I thought that was super sweet. We've got some upcoming tests. Paulette Harris test date is coming up. Joanna Perez is coming up and Keandra Jones is testing on 811. So we want to send them all kinds of good vibes. So keep our fingers crossed for them. I'm sure they're going to do fantastic. And Ladybug stopped by to say that uh, Ladybug just started training for CNA. So we hope that uh, she catches the bug. And uh, JCHF uh, Ministries loves our teaching and thinks it's detailed and easy to understand. And that's really what I'm all about. I want to make this easy for everybody so that we can go out there and provide stellar patient care to all the patients that deserve it. So I love hearing from you guys. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment on any of my videos. Make sure you tune in every Thursday at three. I love talking with you guys. Um, this really is the highlight of my week. So thank you for being part of that. And congratulations to everybody in here that said that you passed, everybody that I just congratulated as well. And uh, tell others about our live session and uh, invite them to join us as well. If you're not actively um, advocating for our industry, please consider doing that. We have a CNA shortage and that's only going to get better if we can get people to become CNAs. And if you want to make your job a little bit easier, tell others how wonderful your job is so that they'll join and help reduce some of this shortage that we're under. So please make sure that you're actively recruiting other people that have big hearts. Not just anybody belongs in healthcare. We want people that have the heart for healthcare. 
And Portia, welcome. Poor, uh, my name is Portia. Today is my first day. I'm really enjoying watching you from LA. Well, thank you for watching for watching us from all the way across the country. As usual, I'm here in Florida. And um, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So same time, same place next week. Hopefully my microphone will work right away. And uh, I will see you next Thursday at 3. Until next time, happy caregiving.